All right, guys, how's it going? This is Mr. Zari here at Landrum Middle School in Spring Branch ISD. And today we're going to take a look at how to program touch sensors into our VEX robots using Robot C. Now, before we start anything, I just want to remind you guys that we need to make sure that anytime we're doing something, we're always using our brain and we're thinking it through. Okay? So, First thing that we want to do is we want to open up Robot C. I've already got my robot connected and I've built uh, the vehicle that we had last time uh, on the previous motor video. That's the same vehicle that I'm using except I've added two touch sensors. So let me go ahead and open up our uh, sample program uh, which I've saved uh, on my desktop and I've shared it with you guys. So I'm going to open up a uh, Zare Robotics template. Okay, and I'm going to open it up, make sure there's nothing here. Again, this time I'm going to skip all this information because we're going to discuss that in class. Uh, but we're going to go straight to line 20, which is where the actual program starts. And I said that we're going to talk about adding in touch sensors. So our touch sensors, there's two in your kit. One looks just like a button. It's a gray button, a circle button. The other one's called a limit switch. It's a little button that is connected to a metal bar that sticks out at an angle. And we'll see that once I show you the video of the actual robot working. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that uh, we can know how to program these touch sensors. And the first thing that we have to figure out is our touch sensors going to be uh, analog sensors or are they digital sensors. Now, we've got to figure that out because we've got to go into the motor and sensor setup. And just like last time, we have our motors connected to ports two and three. So I'm just going to go ahead and call port two our left motor. Okay, using the same naming convention, lowercase first word, uppercase first letter of the second word. And then I have a right motor. Okay. And I need to make sure that I select the correct type of motor, and my motors are the older ones, so they're VEX 269. Okay, so then I have two different options here I have VEX analog sensors and VEX Cortex digital sensors. So, what is the difference between analog and digital? We should have already discussed it in class, but I'm just going to re explain it real quick here. An analog sensor, anything that is analog, does not have two distinct possible answers. It has a wide range of answers. So, for example, if you were to think about the volume knob on an old school stereo, the volume knob has almost an infinite number of possibilities as to where you could position it. That would be considered an analog sensor. A digital sensor is something that only has an on or off possibility. So it only has two possibilities. This is where the concept of a binary system or a binary programming like zero and one, there's only two possibilities. That is considered digital. So on and off is digital. For example, a light switch to turn on the lights in the room, that is a digital input because it can either be on or off and it can't be anything in between. So, I have two digital sensors, and I actually have my push button plugged into my port 1 for digital sensors, and I have my limit switch plugged into port 2. So, I'm going to start off with push button, okay, and that's how I'm going to name it, with a lowercase push and capital B in button, and then I'm going to have limit, capital S-W-I-T-C-H, so limit switch is going to be lowercase limit, uppercase S and switch. And we have these things, and if we look here, what kind of sensor would this be? Well, because they have to touch things, this is considered a touch sensor. So I'm going to make sure that both of these are touch sensors. They are programmed exactly the same way, but they look different and they can behave different. So I'm going to hit apply and hit OK. And I can see that it's already created exactly what I need for uh, my programming. Those first four lines already determine what's going to be in the four ports that I've already uh, named. So before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and hit File, Save As. I'm just going to save this to my desktop, and I'm just going to call this uh, Touch Sensors uh, because that's what we're looking at today. 
All right, and I'm only going to show you the basics. Uh, you guys are going to figure out the rest as we go on. Uh, but of course, these videos are just to try to get you to understand how we program each of the different items that we can add to our robot. So let's think about what we want to do here. I want my robot to basically do nothing once I start. And I'm going to use the push button as kind of like my on switch. So I can run my program, but nothing should happen until I press the on switch, or in this case, it's going to be the push button. So let's take a look at our language library, and I'm going to look in natural language, and I'm going to go down to until. And I see that until has a bunch of different options. I've got until bump, until button, until dark, encoder, light, potentiometer, release, rotation, sonar, sonar less, and touch. Now, most people automatically think, oh, well, you know, it's a button. I'm going to press it, so I'm going to hit until button. That is incorrect. Until button press is dealing with buttons from someplace else. This would be if we had a different cortex. Uh, some of the older cortexes or other cortexes have button presses on them. In our case, this is an until touch. So I'm going to drag and drop that here. And the port that I'm worried about is going to be the one where I have a push button. So I'm going to name that push button. Okay. And so we're going to wait until I press the button. If I don't press the button, my program is just going to halt right there. It's going to stop. Once I press the button, I want my robot to move forward. So we figured out that in order to make it move forward, we have to go to movement and we have to use start motor, right? So I'm going to do start motor. And in my case, I have to do left motor and right motor separately. So I'm going to make sure that this is left motor. I just start with my left and I'm going to give it the highest speed, which is 127. And I'm just going to copy, which is control C and I'm going to paste and I'm going to erase this and make it right motor. Okay, so at this point, my program says, nothing's gonna happen until I press the button. Once I press the button, both the left and the right motor should drive forward at full speed. Now, what I want this to do is once my limit switch runs into something, which is basically just another button, once my limit switch runs into something, I want it to stop both motors. So the limit switch is neat because it can basically stick out kind of like as a feeler and it can basically touch something. And once it touches something, it presses the button inside the sensor and it's just like pressing a button. So I'm going to use until touch again and I'm just going to copy and paste that here. But this time it is called a limit switch. So I'm going to rename this as limit and capital S. It's really important to make sure that you spell things correctly because if you misspell it, it won't work. Okay, and once it presses that limit switch, I want both motors to stop. So I'm going to drag stop motor. I'm going to make sure that the left motor start uh, stops. And then I'm just going to simply copy this and I'm going to paste it right here. And I'm going to change left to right. Okay, so at this point, this is my program. The way it reads, it's very linear. There's no other fancy things happening here. I'm going to wait until I press the button. Once I press the button, the motors will drive forward full speed. They will drive forever until I press the limit switch. Once I press the limit switch, both motors stop and the program should be over. So I've already done my motor and sensor setup. Let's just double check. I've got my digital sensors taken care of. I have no analog sensors. I've done my motor, uh, uh, motor ports, so I think I'm good there. So I'm ready to download this. So I'm gonna hit F5. Actually, I'm not gonna hit F5 because that'll stop the video. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just compile and download program. So I'm gonna hit that and it should automatically download this. Okay, and it appears that I did not turn my Cortex on. Now it is on, I'm gonna try this one more time. So I'm gonna go compile and download. All right, so I now have all of that taken care of. And you know, while I'm here, I can take a look, see if I have uh, things set up correctly. I can see my motors, but I can't see my sensors. And so we'll see if that corrects itself after I press start, it did. So I can now see my sensors. So let's take a look. 
if I look at my sensor value, I can see that when I press the push button, nothing is happening. So I'm afraid that maybe my push button is not quite right. Let's see if my limit switch works. My limit switch works. So what I'm going to do in between when I stop this video and go to the actual video of the robot working, I'm going to have to switch out my push button because I can see that it does not work right now. All right, so see you in a second. All right guys, so I've got my robot. I messed with this push button and I think uh, my issue is just the cable wasn't connected quite right. But I do know that there is something wrong with this push button because I have to, as I press it, I kind of have to hold it. So that will look kind of strange. So this is my push button and this is my limit switch. So this is the limit switch. This thing is gonna run into that chair which should cause it to stop. So let's see if this works. Okay, so it actually stopped it. I can just make sure that you guys are aware of that because the motors are still not running. It didn't just stop simply because there was a chair there. So this press caused that to happen. So I'm going to show you to you one more time, but I'm just going to do it by hand here. So I'm going to turn it off, rerun the program. Okay, so it's going to continue forever or until the battery runs out or until I press the limit switch, which I'm going to do right now. And that's it. So that program worked exactly as I expected. Okay, so that robot worked exactly as I expected. Okay, uh, we have until touch, which was our starting. Then we had both motors move forward at full speed and they move forward until we touch the limit switch and then they both stop. So this was really simple. I just wanna show you how easy it is to incorporate a touch sensor or in this case, a digital touch sensor into your robotics program. Of course, I'm just showing you the basics. We will get into more complicated uh, situations, but since this is introductory, we got to figure this out from the very beginning. Uh, so I want to remind you guys, make sure that you're always using your brain and you think things through and always try to choose to do the right thing. It just makes life easier. You guys take it easy.